Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here. Let's talk some mountain weather. Here's a complete update on what we're seeing here with this uh, uh, this golden combo. And here, first stop is Aspen Mountain. Snowing and blowing up there. Uh, reporting about 11 inches of uh, snow so far out of this uh, this storm cycle. And we're probably going to add about another 10 to 14 inches to that. But that's Aspen, similar at snow mass. I want to take you up to Alta. They are reporting... Um, 10 in 12 hours, 17 and 24, so a storm total right now of 18. And my expectation is that we'll add probably 25 inches to that. We've got a, a significant push of moisture coming in this afternoon, tonight, and throughout the day tomorrow for Utah and the central to northern mountains of Colorado. You can see it's obviously still socked in there and snowing. Up in Vail. Similar situation, they were pointing about 11 inches to Aspen Snowman, similar. Um, and we'll probably add another 10 to 14 to this, uh, to, this, to this total. So you can see very low visibility. It is cold, it is windy, and it is snowing. I was looking at some of the numbers. Um, it's about zero in Colorado at uh, 12,000 feet with winds of 20 to 40 miles per hour. The winds are going to increase today in Colorado, especially as you approach the Continental Divide and the Front Range High Peaks, we could see gusts of 40, 50, 60 miles an hour. Wind chills are going to be running well below zero. It's going to be brutal in Colorado's central and northern mountains by midday into the afternoon as this next push and what this represents is jet energy that is coming in with this uh, this next push. So here are my latest uh, bullet points and trends and things I'm seeing. Next wave comes in tonight throughout the day tomorrow. For Utah and Colorado, again, significant push. We're going to see um, very high snow numbers with this come in overnight into tomorrow. In Wyoming, the snow will continue rather steadily through 12-4. It may pick up a little bit um, this afternoon, tonight, and into tomorrow. Um, we haven't seen incredible snow rates up in Jackson Hole as of yet, so this next push might increase those those ratios. In the northeast, we've got a storm system coming afternoon 12-3 into 12-4, and I'll show you what those accumulation numbers look like here in just a sec. I want to take you back and show you uh, water vapor satellite imagery. Here's the latest, and, and, and really, you can see this moisture plume, this atmospheric river that is uh, that has set up and is maturing and is bringing in loads of moisture. Two big storm systems helping to anchor this thing. One right here in the Pacific Northwest with just copious amounts of rain at lower elevations and heavy snow on the higher volcanoes and the higher cascades. Another big low behind it. There's your disturbance coming out of Hawaii. So uh, the flow is still there. It's still intact and it's still directed right at the Pacific Northwest in BC. And then some of that breaks loose in the form of waves on that west-northwest flow, that stacked flow. And then it brings it down through Idaho and Wyoming, Utah. In Colorado. Here's the forecast radar and satellite. So by this afternoon, you can see what's happening here. Look at the next big chunk of moisture coming south, coming down from the north towards the south on that west northwest flow. Here's what happens though by the time we get into Sunday, looking at heavy precip, cold temps, and a lot of wind across the central and northern mountains of Colorado through the Wasatch, clipping the Tetons. You can see the feed of moisture all the way back into the Pacific Northwest. By the time we get into Sunday afternoon, still seeing the same thing. And by uh, Monday morning, some light snows, the very tail end, the residual component in the central and northern mountains of Colorado and the Tetons. Then that's it. It dries up on the in, in the Intermountain West pretty much, and we have to wait. It's a waiting game um, until that next big storm comes out of the Pacific Northwest and begins to drop south with some jet support. And the action begins, begins to kick up around 12.8 through about 12.11 through Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado, and also New Mexico with that final storm. All right, let me show you with the jet. I've got a lot of maps here. Um, so here's the jet by tomorrow, late in the day. Still, again, looking at that west-northwest flow. But look to the northeast. You see all that jet energy, that white streak? Uh, that jet streak is supporting a storm system. Afternoon 12.3 into 12.4, we're going to see some moderate to heavy accumulation. I'll show you those numbers in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. So this is 12.8. This is that next storm system, which drops south. You can see the dip in the jet. It drops all the way down through Nevada into Utah, 
potentially Arizona, New Mexico, and also Colorado, 12-8 um, through about 12-11. In fact, here's the jet by 12-10. Look at the dip in the jet over New Mexico. A low spins up in southeast Colorado, the Texas and Oklahoma panhandle, somewhere in there, and it throws heavy snow back into uh, southern parts of Colorado and northern New Mexico. Let me show you. So this is snow remaining, additional snow to accumulate today through 12-4. So at roughly another two feet for Alta Snowbird, uh, probably about 15 to 20 for Big Cottonwood and about a foot Park City Deer Valley, about another foot on the way for the Tetons. In Colorado, central to northern mountains, you're going to get blasted with wind, cold temps, and heavy snow. Probably another foot for snow mass, about eight in Crested Butte. Um, and this flow looks particularly uh, good for Vail, probably, you know, probably another 15. Another 15, uh, well, 15 on the way for Steamboat. Um, probably a foot to 14 for Loveland and Breck, a basin, and a little bit less as you drop into Winter Park and go up towards Cameron Pass. And obviously still some good snow to fall up in Idaho, uh, Whistler, and parts of the Pacific Northwest. Let me just zoom in on that map. The front range of Colorado, you're looking down to Denver, but you're looking west, northwest, through the foothills up to the Continental Divide and west of there. Uh, and like I was saying, those numbers, probably 12 to 14 for Loveland, um, A Basin dropping down into Summit County to Breckenridge over the top of the 10-mile range, even more through Vail, potentially. Steamboat 15, you can see the numbers through Buff Pass, even big stuff. Here is the uh, the next period, the middle period, 12.5 to 12.8. Tracking that next storm system dropping south, you can see the numbers, potentially another four to five there through parts of the Wasatch and some snow for the Tetons, Idaho, and Montana. So here is the final period. This is 12.9 through 12.11. I did this to capture the development of that low pressure in southeast Colorado, northern New Mexico. Potentially some very big numbers down there. Um, wet mountains. Wolf Creek may benefit from some of that as well. Uh, Angel Fire, Ski Santa Fe, Taos could be in very good position, but keep in mind this is way down the road. Let me see what else we've got here. All right, the northeast, 12-2 through 12-8. I just wanted to show you how much snow that storm system um, laid on 12-3 into 12-4 could bring. Potentially 8 to 14 inches through um, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, with most of that Killington, Sugarbush, Mad River, Stow, that the northern aspects of the of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine to Mount Washington and Sunday River, Sugarloaf, USA. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this uh, this update. Always appreciate you tuning in here. Enjoy all this new snow, and be safe out there. Take care.